Today, we discuss the turn 1 pass it in 2022, section B. Two projectiles P and Q are launched simultaneously into two trajectories V and W, respectively, and both landed on the same point as shown in the graph. P is launched at 65 degrees from horizontal with initial speed of 31 meter per second, and Q is launched at 25 degrees from horizontal. So the first question is to calculate the time of flight of P. So we have the initial speed, the angle, and also information such as about the horizontal distance and also the height. So to get the time, we can solve it in vertical component where we have the vertical velocity as 31 sine 65 equal to 28.1 meter per second. So here you can choose the formula of S is equal to UT plus half AT squared. So the time of flight from zero to ground. Okay, so we can just apply S is equal to zero to obtain the time. So just put in the vertical velocity and also the acceleration as negative 9.81 meter per second squared. Since we take, uh, we will take the outward direction as positive. So the gravity pull, okay, the gravity acceleration should be a negative value. So solve this quadratic equation will give us two answer. First is zero and second is 5.73 second. So zero is certainly yes, because it is uh, at zero at the time of zero. And it is at zero again when the time is 5.73 second. So just mention that the final answer should be equal to 5.73 second. So actually there is another simple method, another simpler method that we can use, which is we can solve it also in the horizontal component. So we can get also the horizontal speed as 31 cos 65, which is 13.1 meter per second. Since we have the horizontal distance, distance we can also apply S is equal to Bt. Okay, we have 75 equal to 13.1 T and we shall get also the same answer 5.73 second. So we shall move on to question B. Determine the initial speed of Q. So before we answer this question, okay, please take note this is a four marks question. And also I'd like to clarify a certain misunderstanding by the students. So some of you may think that uh, both projectile P and Q have the same time of flight. Okay, but actually, okay, we look back the question. Both are launched simultaneously and both landed on the same point. But it doesn't mention about the time. Okay, so means that uh, P and Q does not necessarily to be landed at the same time. So because some students answer, uh, after they answer A, so they thought that the time should can be used to answer question B. But no, okay, we need to be clear that both P and Q, okay, the time of flight may not be the same. Okay, we cannot do the assumption here. Okay, so combining what we have here, okay, so first uh, we have the height and also the horizontal distance, and we have the angle. So maybe we shall refer to the horizontal distance, okay, where we have the formula S is equal to VT. So look at this equation that we have the unknown U and T. So to solve this question, uh, many of you might use the answer from A, okay, 5.73 seconds to put it into the equation, which is wrong. So what we can do here is by the concept of simultaneous, we need, we need to find something to replace the T. And one of the ways actually has been learned, okay, has been discussed in the textbook, which you can refer to the topic about the maximum range. So we shall go through the derivation here. So what we need to do is to find an expression to replace the T in the equation. Okay, that's how we do the simultaneous equation. So we can refer to the equation of V is equal to U plus AT. Okay, this is a quite a popular equation when we talk about the vertical components. Okay, because at peak, we know that the vertical velocity is equal to zero okay, when the object at the peak or the maximum height. So from here, we can obtain the equation of T is U sine theta over G. Okay, so this is the time required to reach the maximum height. And when the object landed on the ground, so we know that the time should be double, okay, because the it is a, a, a similar, because it is a quadratic graph, so there's um, a symmetry. So the time is double, it is equal to 2U sine theta over G. So you can revise back about the directions because it's uh, something familiar for you. Okay, so we shall replace the T here, okay, because we are going to consider the horizontal distance, okay, 75, okay, where the object landed already. So we shall take the uh, expression of T is equal to 2U sine theta over G. 
put it into the equations and do the simplification. Okay, you should shall obtain the sum uh equation that you're familiar with. Okay, you should seen this equation before that the horizontal distance, which is also known as the maximum range, u squared sine two theta over g. So you can check again each of the variables in the equations. We have the range as 75 meter, angle 25 degree, the gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meter per second squared. So now we have all the values ready. So you can start do the calculation and the initial speed of Q is equal to 30.99 or it is almost to 31 meter per second. So if you check back the equation that, that the P also have the initial speed of 31 meter per second. So this is an important information to answer question C. So which trajectory is most affected by the presence of air resistance? Give your reason. So since both P and Q have the same initial velocity, but uh, they are projected at different angle. So this would give a different scenario, uh, give a different result that uh, we could expect that P should have longer time of flight. So you can do the calculation yourself to get the time of flight for W, and you will find it is actually shorter than the trajectory V. So here uh, to determine which is the most affected that uh, we shall look at the time of flight. So the longer the time, okay, the larger the effect okay, the, uh, of the air resistance. So the answer here is the trajectory V. Okay, since it spends longer time of flight, uh, flight before it lands on the ground. So that's all for question 16. We move on to question 17. A copper rod of length 45 centimeter has a cross-sectional area. One end of the copper is heated to 100 degrees Celsius and the other end is placed in an ice bath of zero degrees Celsius. When the copper rod reaches its steady state, calculate the temperature gradient. Okay, so simple, d theta over dx. So apply the formula and you should get the answer as negative 222.2 Kelvin per meter. So I guess we need to have the negative sign here since the temperature is reduced from 100 to 0 degrees Celsius, okay, according to the definition of the temperature gradient. Okay, and then the next question, rate of heat flow in the rod. So remember the equations that the rate of heat flow is proportional to the area and also proportional to the temperature gradient. So we have the, this equation, dq dt equal to ka d theta dx, okay, if you don't remember the equation. So we have all the values here. The k is 3 at 5, k okay, thermal conductivity. Area is given, and remember to convert it into meter square. And then the temperature gradient. So the final answer is 10.7 watt. And the last question is to explain the mechanism of heat conduction through the copper rod. So copper is a metal. Okay, so we know that metal conduct heats through two methods. First is the lattice vibration. Next is the collision of free electrons. So for non-metal object, it only vib conduct heats through the lattice vibration. So here, I think we need to mention both of them since it is a, it is a metal. So at the hotter end of copper rod, okay, so this is how the lattice vibration occur. Okay, the molecule there vibrate rigorously and collide with adjacent molecule to transfer the kinetic energy okay, or the heat energy. And beside, we have free electron in the metal, which also gain kinetic energy from the vibrating molecule at the hotter end. So those free electrons also responsible to collide with other free electron, okay, which is lower, and also other molecules as well. So this is how you answer the mechanism of heat conduction through the copper rod. And let's conclude the section B of past year in 2022. Thank you.